all this technology for three slides. Uh, first of all, thank you for um, allowing me to have a few more minutes on, on the program today. Many of you will already have heard over the years of the Cases of Worship in Scotland project, which began when Derek Hall and I set up Scottish Church Heritage Research. The project has gone really uh, done a huge amount of work, all with volunteers. And what I'm actually speaking to you about today is please, would some of you uh, think of becoming a volunteer on the project? We've seen lots of pictures of crowds of people taking part in community archaeology. This is a different sort of community archaeology in that uh, small groups come together and record the churches in the area where they live. Now, it's easy to join a CHR, you can, it, so that it's easy to get, take part. You can either become a member, you could make a job donation, which would mean that we would send you regular information, and you can become a volunteer. At the moment, our volunteers have been decimated by the fact we had a failure in our IT system for about seven weeks, and for most of this year it's been faulty. So, we to quote a phrase, we've had a hell of a time. Today I'm seeking support with helping particularly in Dundee. There are some 193 records on our database of churches in Dundee, past and present. Um, we also have mosques and Sikh temples, and one or two other, other faith buildings which are also included in the project. But of the 193 churches in Dundee, we have actually done some work at about a hundred of them, and this one has recently been worked on. This is the city churches in Dundee. It's four separate churches, plus really a few hangers on, all on one site. It's the pride and joy of Dundee City. And uh, Carly uh, Cooper, from, who is one of the curators in the McManus, uh, works with me on a voluntary basis a couple of days a week, and she's, been, she's researched this for our project. It's not a deep research project. It's gathering together all the elements that separate out the four churches and then show how they fit together on the one side. Um, that's not the best photograph she took, but it's the only one I could find uh, at the time. So the work that's required is really photography, but for those who don't like taking pictures, there's lots of simple research projects that can be done in the local library um, and in the university library and so on. So if anybody who's interested at all at any level would be, could be found a job. So in that sense, it is very much a community project, um, but uh, it's, it's of a different kind. It's not the Rasmus that we see in all dancing that some are. The project has many remits. One, and the main one, relating to the closures of places of worship. And in fact, when the project started, it was the problem of closures was considered important. Today, it is drastic. The Church of Scotland is, uh, for a variety of reasons, and I'm not commenting on, on the rights or wrongs of it, going to have to close huge numbers of churches. Now, the buildings will remain. Many of them will go into other uses but the contents will disappear. I've been involved in the closure of a few churches, and when they close, nothing is publicly said about what happens to the contents. And quietly, over weeks before the closure, and I'm not being in any way critical of this, it's what happens, items belonging to individual donors, families, just are taken away. I mean, there must be discussions within the community, within the church, but you don't see that as an outsider. But the items from the church are slowly dispersed. The Church of Scotland itself uh, has a, what, what's jokingly known as exchange in March. Uh, when a church closes, it can advertise <coughs> surplus furniture like communion tables and so on. And churches, new churches, uh, often are very grateful to get these, and that's wonderful, as long as a record is kept. Often when I go into a church and see not one, but two, three, four, and even five on one occasion, communion tables, and nobody knows where they came from. Our project is aimed at trying to keep a, make a written record, photographic record, 
of all these different elements, the things inside. And in particular, we um, are recording the, the objects inside the churches, uh, particularly plaques. I found one the other day, which you'll see on our website on the 11th of November, a, um, a memorial to all the men of the two world wars who died, and very touchingly, the only one I've seen in thousands, and a tribute to the men who came back. Any of you who has military people involved in the Second World War who came back will know the psychological damage as well as the physical damage. This is the only war memorial I've ever seen that mentions these people. Anyway, that's one of the elements of recording the inside of the church. You never know what uh, soul-destroying, interesting, exciting things that you'll actually find. On another note, and to finish, uh, I once had an email about a year ago from somebody in Singapore who sent me this photograph. Uh, at the time, the actual is, it was even dirty and it looks there. And he said to me, I found this in a junk shop. He called it an antique shop and sent me a photograph, a junk shop. <laughs> he said, I found this. Nobody knows anything about it. It's very black. So I, he said, can you tell me what it is? Um, he had no idea it came from the church. So I said, OK, why are you writing to me? Why should I know anything about it? He said, I just found your address on the website. So we, I said to him, can, can you clean it a bit? Is it silver by any chance? So he didn't know that. This is email flying backwards and forwards on one day. And uh, so he said, yes, I cleaned and rubbed it a bit. And it's shiny. So he cleaned it a bit further. And I did a bit more research, and finally, he came up with this. I asked him for a photograph of it, and after he cleaned it, so he gave me the feeling as well. Um, Ryan Hill Church, Ryan Hill UP Church, Dundee, 1877. Now, at the time, I had no idea how that got to Singapore. I still don't know, but what I do know is that there were mission churches out there, and Ryan Hill, like many another Dundee church, sent some of its surplus silver out to these new churches to help them. And I think that's how that got there. Um, but I also spoke at a conference in Utrecht a year ago um, about these objects inside churches and what a difference we have. We lose everything. All the money that the families have put into uh, helping the church to become the family of the Christian people or indeed this goes for mosques to some extent as well. It just can disappear like snow of a dike. In the other continent, for the most part, the church has to be closed because the congregation has dwindled to about three. The building is kept, it's kept heated, every object is kept in it and curated, and the doors are closed and you can only get in there with very great difficulty. So there's a huge problem on both sides of the English Channel, what to do with redundant churches, how do you keep them? Do you keep them dead with everything you them? Or do you keep them in other uses with all the contents dispersed? I don't know what the answer is, but one of the things I'm doing is seeking volunteers to help with our churches in Scotland, so at least to have a photographic record of what's in them when they were alive. Thank you for listening.